the supplies we're going to need. You're going to need a sweater. You're going to need some stuffing. You're going to need a sock. I get my socks at the Dollar Tree. And for the base, so it sits flat, I use canning lids. Or you can cut, this is a pretty thin piece of cardboard because I just wanted to show you. But I would use a thicker piece of cardboard if you don't have canning lids. You're going to need some strong thread string. I use usually use cro crochet thread. And if you want, if you don't want to make the nodes like I will show you, you can do these half inch um, split balls and they're one inch or these are one and a half inch um, ball knobs that you can use also and um, I'm going to use this material and I get this at Joann's it's a stretch it's a uh, jet set nude and it's stretchy so and it's I like it because it's flesh colored also you're going to need a couple of pieces of fur and I I'm using cream for this one. I think I used, no, it just looks white when it's in the light. Um, one's for his beard, the other one's for his pom-pom. And uh, this one will do some trim around the hat. Um, we'll see, I, I like it without. And you're gonna need some um, greenery and some ribbon and stuff so that you can decorate the hat, okay? So let's get going and I'm going to show you how I, I'm not going to cut this sweater up. I actually got two sweaters and they were, I got them for $2 each at a thrift store and I'm going to keep one. I haven't tried it on yet, but I'm going to keep one and it, it's so pretty, um, but they make great gnomes. So it's like, oh, uh, but if it doesn't fit, then I'll cut it up. So, cause I'm not going to cut that one up. I've already cut the other one up. So let me move some of this out of the way. So first we're going to start with our sock. You're going to need some rice also. So you're going to take either your cardboard or your canning lid and I put the metal side down and I put it in my sock first. And I try to get it so that seam is kind of up on the side and usually the heel of the sock becomes the the head the front of the gnome and then I take and I've got about a cup to half a cup to a cup of rice and I put it like this and then I dump it in I have not had any problem with bugs I've been making my gnomes with rice for probably five years and I've never and I've had people that come back to my craft fairs and I've never had anybody say and that they bought my gnomes and they, that they've got bugs so for me it's cheaper and um because i make a lot of gnomes around fall time and then you're going to take some stuffing i get my stuffing at walmart i get the big huge 50 ounce bag and i know it's over ten dollars and if you want a fatter gnome you have to kind of really push your stuffing down and I try to make sure it's even so it's not lopsided and if you use your stuffing and you take it out like out of a pillow you might have to pull it apart and fluff it up so it isn't because if you put it in there like that it just gets where it looks lumpy and stuff like that so if you ever stuff a sock to make a gnome and then you have to pull it out you have to take the stuffing out you're going to have to fluff it up, pull it apart, and then stuff it all the way to the top. And we're going to leave this open. So if we, when we get to putting his, the sweater on the outside of the body, um, and then put the hat on, if we have to take some out, if his head is too big, then we can do that. So what I did was try to get the sweater. So here is the sweater and I cut the arms off I thought I was going to use an arm for his hat but I didn't I used the bottom of the ribbing and it was only like about this big so it wasn't very big which I kind of like it with the pom-pom and so we're going to cut this part I'm going to cut the neck off I'm going to save this part 
and you never know what you might use it for. And I'm just going to cut a little bit right there and I'll set that aside. And then we're going to take, and there is a right side and a wrong side to this fabric. I think the right side was actually on the inside of the sweater. So this is the wrong side, so I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to cut, you can take your sock, your, your gnome, and you can see where you have to pull up to get those sides. So I can move this over because I want to use this. I do have some from the other part um, because it's only going to come down to about here and the rest is going to cover it up by his hat. So I'm going to cut it right about here. So go looking at your thrift stores. If you're rummage sailing in the summer, um, look at your rummage sales. That's a great place to get cheap sweaters. I'm gonna cut this off by his, by um, the arms on the sweater. I just wanted to check and make sure you guys could see. I am sorry that I haven't posted a video in a very long time. Um, I just got really burned out. I did shut my Facebook um, group down because it was just getting to be way too much and I work full time. And um, we found out early spring that our cat is a diabetic. So that has been a long um, process trying to get his blood sugar regulated and the right insulin and food so yeah and he's doing he's doing a lot better he was kind of sick there and then it's just like his blood sugar got over 500 but he didn't act like he was sick I mean he was peeing a lot and um, stuff uh, eating a lot so now what we're gonna do and I was talking through this. So you're going to take and you're going to gather up your fabric. And I usually gather up the corners just like this first. And make sure you have this, the right side out, the side that you want. We'll take our string out of there. And then I gather up these other parts. And I grab it. And I usually have it face down. So this is the back. Make sure you have all of those tucked in there and then wrap this around. I'm not going to double this. And then I wrap it around and I wrap it so it comes, so it's going around the front and then my threads come in the back and push it up as far as you think you can. Um, depends if you want a taller gnome and you want to make sure these ends stay out. Don't let them stay escape underneath this thread. So if you can check and make sure that you have everything pulled up, then you can tighten this. You can pull both of them. And I'm gonna cut some off and you can save that and use that for like arms or whatever. And then I use this, I do a surgeon's knot, which is three loops and then you tighten it and then I do a regular knot. And I cut it to about a half inch. And then you're gonna take and you're gonna pull up your gathers. If you have to use a pair of uh, needle nose pliers, I, I always use them. I bet I use these every day when I craft and I do craft every day. Um, so I like to distribute the gather so it does it so I'm not all bunched up in one place and so that it's not loose and it's not going to slip and so all of this you can save this and use this for arms if we if you have to um, or anything else if you need it if you were going to use them for shoes I've used sweaters and made out of shoes and I know I need to do get back and do my videos on um, my gnome series so i will get that going it's probably not going to be till after the first of the year because i got some 
three craft shows coming up and then we're going to Hawaii the end of this year. So um, we're going to be gone for a couple of weeks. So there we have our gnome. We're going to make our nose. And depends on how big you want your nose. And so I just, I usually just cut. I don't even measure anymore. And then I want the, I know there's a right side and a wrong side. So you're going to have the wrong side down. And you're going to lay it over your hand like this. So that you have your thumb and your finger. And we're going to stuff it in here. And with some of my stuffing, it has this curly stuff that I will see through my nose because I know I've seen it before. So if I see that in the stuffing, I try to pull it out. So you're going to stuff that in your finger, try to keep these edges up. And I switch it back from one hand to the other just so I can... Um, adjust it and stuff it in there and I want a little bit more stuffing and I got some of that curly stuff in there and before you tie it check and see if you got a nice smooth nose if you have any of those in there because they will you will see them um, okay so then we're going to take we have all these gathers all the ends up and you're going to hang on to it like this and then we're going to take our thread, I have some cut, and I'm going to double this, and I'm going to wrap it, I'm going to hang it over like this, and I'm going to just take one side and wrap it around, and then pull it tight, both of them. And then I'm going to take whichever one is longer, and wrap it around a couple more times, and then pull both of them tight again. And that should lock it. And if you had to leave, it's going to stay. So wrapping it after you wrapped it that first time and pulled it tight. And then you wrap it a second time or wrap it like two, three more times. It just locks that into place. So then, because I used to have to hold these between my knees when I did them. So now don't leave your nose like this. Okay. Do not do that. We're going to get this so we have a nice nose we're going to pull these gathers and you can shape it if you want a round nose you're just going to go all the way around i like them kind of oval and then you want to make sure that it's all even see mine i can tell it looks a little off so i will see where i need to pull those gathers And that looks pretty good. So now we're going to take our thread and we're going to pull it over our nose. Take all of these and I put them between my fingers and we're going to cut this about a quarter of an inch from that thread. Just like that. And then you're going to take and put this around here. And if you need to check and make sure you have all your sweater. If you see some that might be um, needs to be pulled up, then that's when you can use your needle nose pliers. So, I'm trying to get this so I have, I like the thread side down. And don't pull on your nose out like this because you'll pull it apart. So I tie it around the back and then I tie it. I don't tie it in a knot yet and then I pull it tight. And then I wrap it around the front and pull it to the back again. And then I'll do my surgeon's knot. And it's like 1.30 in the morning here for me. And I'm filming this. My husband's in bed. And he'll probably say, what time did you get to bed? Oh, 3 o'clock. We're going to cut that off. So there we have our nose. Okay. And now you're going to get your beard. So I have a piece, it's about three inch by three inch. And I use, always use small scissors. Um, I would take and blow dry this with a blow dryer. It will smooth out your fur so beautifully. You will be amazed. It's awesome. 
So mine is a little kinked and I can't do it right now because my husband's sleeping. So I'm going to cut this down and I'm just cutting the backing. I'm not going in like this. Do not cut like this. You're going to cut all your fur. you got to just get in and get right where that backing is. Okay? Right there. So we're just going to cut. We're going to bring this down so it's kind of a point, but it'll be more rounded. And then we're going to do the other side, cut that corner off. And then I like to check and make sure it looks even. And I'm going to cut a little bit more over here. So we have that. And then I'm going to take and cut a U-shape. So this is going to get tucked under his nose. And then pull it off. You'll have some thread, some hair, uh, fur that will come loose. And then you can take and you can brush this. Um, I would blow dry it and get it nice and smooth. And if you're selling your gnomes, make sure you tell your customers that if the fur gets, if his beard gets kinked, that they can just blow dry it and it'll smooth it out. So now you're going to take, you're going to put glue right underneath where we cut that U shape. And you're going to pull his nose up and tuck that underneath. And be very careful not to get any glue on the nose because it does not come off. And then you're going to pull those up, those tabs, right alongside the nose. And then take a little bit of glue and put it down in that nose part there. Okay, so then that will protect it. And if it uh, breaks, it's glued. Okay, so now we're going to work on our hat. And this is the, the ribbing. And I have to make sure I have the right side. So this, this was actually the inside of the sweater. And it's like, did they sew that wrong? Because I sure like this side. This was the outside. So it was like, I don't know. So you're going to take, and I didn't think this was going to be big enough, but it's going to be plenty big. So we're going to take and we're going to cut it and it's going to come up here. So our point is going to come up here. And it's going to be kind of rounded, but that's okay. Because we got to have it big enough to go over his head. So if you, before you cut that, what you can do is measure your hat. Your, take your, like with the, <clears throat> with this one is what I did with the other, the first one. I just wrapped it around because I like it to come over his nose. And see where it comes in the back so that you have enough to glue. You can always cut it shorter. So cut it a little bigger to start with. If you cut it too small, then you can make a mini gnome. Okay, so this is what our piece looks like. So it's kind of like a half a circle, three quarters of a circle. And you can go straight if you wanted, but mine was kind of rounded. And then we're going to take our glue gun and we're just going to start and do a little bit at a time. You're going to go right close to that edge and you're going to press that really good and try not to press it in. I'm just tapping on it and you're going to lift it up and then do a little bit more and then press it and with sweaters if it's a lighter if it's not a thick weave like this, you're gonna the glue is gonna come through. You're gonna see your sock. So I always try to get a tighter weave. I have done where if I have something that's really light, then I will try to match the sock to maybe the sweater. If I can find that color sweater or sock. So now we're all the way down here. And I had a little bit longer. I kind of maybe stretched it out a little bit. So I just kind of bunched it up so that it's nice and even. And we have to let this dry. Okay, so let's let that sit and I will be back in a couple of minutes. So I thought while that's drying, I'm just gonna talk about this one a little bit. This one I did use a sleeve. And if you're going to look for your sweaters, 
and you're going to use if you can use the sleeve for the hat. And when I did, um, I did a red one, just sort of red fleece, and I had the hat really going down a lot, and it looked okay, but it was just red, and I kind of liked the sparkle of the sweater. So if you're going to do like a Santa gnome, try to keep the hat like this so it comes so it doesn't go down so far so it goes around instead of going dragging you know having it go down okay so like this one goes down a little bit but and, and then when you're looking at your sweaters look at your sleeves stretch it see if you're able to stretch that cuff of that sleeve so if you're going to put it on your if you're going to use it for a gnome you have enough to to stretch if it doesn't stretch it's not going to be it's not going to do any good i mean you could use like we did use the other part of the sweater so you can do that too and if you had to i've cut my sleeves and i've cut them open and i've used that for my bodies on my sweater of my gnomes like we did this one and you can make mini gnomes if you're going to make mini gnomes um i buy little baby socks toddler socks infant socks and I stuff it and do it that way and like this one that this was a little infant sock I have a little piece of cardboard in there and this was a sweater and then I decorate it with all kinds of beads my nose is smaller and I just have a little piece of beard so I can do some videos on these two on how to make the mini gnomes but it's pretty much the same um, but they're a lot of fun I those I um, you really don't have a problem selling. They usually go right away. Okay, so let's check our hat. And we're going to let that dry. So what we're going to do is we're going to do our pom-pom while we're waiting for that to dry good. And I'm going to try to get, find a needle. And you're going to get your thread. And you don't need a long piece. And you don't even have to knot it, but we need a to leave a tail when we go to gather this, just like you do a circle. So you're gonna put your thread in there. And then I, I've i got about a two inch square and I'm gonna cut my corners off. Try to cut just the backing. And when you let me get you a little closer so you can see what I'm doing. So when you go to gather this, you're just going to take big stitches. And then you're just going to start anywhere. I go about a quarter inch away. You're going to try to grab this fur. And just take a couple stitches. If you can't push your needle through, push it down on the table. Or I've had to use where I've had to use my needle nose pliers. Now we want to leave a tail, okay? So you're just going to take big running stitches and you're grabbing onto this fur because you don't want it to get caught in your thread. That's why you're hanging on to it. Make sure you don't pull your end all the way through. And you can do this with any color fur. If you didn't want to use the same color as the beard, you can do a different color. And you can buy, I bought pom-poms from Joann's, the big, huge pom-poms um, that, that you use for like winter hats. And I've cut those open and used them for beards. So you could cut those open and use them for, to make smaller pom-poms for your gnomes. And if you get their, um, if you have their app or whatever, you can get the get coupons, so you can get them 40 for 50 percent off. I think those big ones are like $5.99 for their pom poms. So we're just going to go all the way around until we come back to where we started. And make sure you don't have so by holding on to that, we didn't drag any of our fur through our thread and get it knotted up. And so we're just going to take that and you can cut your needle off and we're going to let that sit so we can put it 
on our hat and we're not going to sew it on our hat we're going to glue it so now we're going to turn this right side out and you want to maybe check it first and make sure everything is glued and to the tip so it looks good and I usually don't sew my hats but I know there's a lot of my um, subscribers that don't sew and they use hot glue so I try to give you guys options I prefer the sewing and this one I had sewed okay so we have this now we can see we're gonna see if we need to unstuff this or stuff it more the seam is gonna go in the back and you're gonna bring it down I like it covering his nose and I'm not gonna pull it down really far and we're gonna flip it up like that and we're gonna put a little bit of glue on this edge and then you can get your fingers in there and push it down and I could have glued this a little bit more so I'm just going to glue that together right there and press it down and turn it around and flip up your nose and then put a little bit I prefer to put it you can put it on the nose but if you do put it way back here and then carefully print that down and then press it and you're going to take a try to comb that fur out of the way I gotta move my make sure you guys can see and then pull this up and then go I need a glue stick and then go right along that edge and press that down try to make sure your glue gun isn't dripping this one drips more than the first, this is a Gorilla Glue Gun, than my first one I had. So this one kind of drips a little bit. And there we have our gnome. So by doing that hat, it kind of comes forward the way I did it. If you don't want to round it like I do, then just do, um, I'll show you. Because I'm going to make more. And I'm going to make it bigger. So if I wanted to, I could just cut it and go up at an angle. So I would cut it from here to here, down like that. But for me, I'm going to sew them, okay? So now we have our hat, and we're going to take the pom-pom, and we're going to put glue in there. So we've kind of got it like a little bowl, and you're going to put some bunch of glue in there. I've never had a problem with it seeping through and you're going to take and put this hat in there and I kind of need something and then you're going to take both of your threads and try not to make sure, sure you get strong thread and make sure that um, it doesn't break so I'm going to tie it and I'm going to pull it tight but I'm not going to try to pull it too tight and then look and see and make sure that it's tight enough. And then you're going to knot this a couple of times. And then we can cut our threads and then we're going to cut them a little long and then we can tuck them in. And then if you need to, you can um, take and I will show you. So I'm just going to throw that in there, just push that in there, wipe your glue gun off, and just squirt some glue, and then go around and see if you need to get some glue in there, just so it stays. And then just press that. And you can blow dry this too, so it gets nice and fluffy. And we can brush it out because we don't have our blow dryer. And if you want to leave it like that, you can. If you want to trim it, you can. Um, but I would do that before you sew it on or glue it on because if you don't like it, you've got it hot glued. Or if you don't want to hot glue it, I always hot glue mine. So this one I'm going to go on this side. And I have some greenery. And, okay, I have a tip for you. 
So when you buy these, and I sometimes if I get a garland that you use for decorating, you know, the big, huge ones that's got all the branches. So if I take and find my clippers, because I want like two or three pieces of this. If I cut, I'm just going to cut a little bit. If I cut it like this, I have that. Okay. So this is what you do instead. You're going to take and separate it where you're going to cut it. So we're going to go way up here because we're going to cut that top part off so that you can get in there and clip that. And you don't have those short pieces, okay? Because I don't, I would rather not have that short little stubby piece. So you just kind of have to work at it a little bit, and so you can get to the wire. And we're gonna cut another one. But if you cut it off like a garland, which I've done before then you don't really have to worry about it. So we got a couple of pieces. That one's kind of short. I'm gonna cut another one that's longer. So we're gonna glue. So this is what you would do. This is when you would do it before you do your greenery. Is I would start in the back like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pin it on and we'll see what it looks like. And you want to make sure you get right close to the edge of that hat. If you're going to glue it, you would start gluing it here to glue a little bit at a time, press it down. Be careful if you're, if it's, if you got a hot temp, if you got your glue on high or low, and then you're going to try to go really close to that edge and then go all the way around. And like I said, I'm just going to kind of pin this because I'm not sure if I want to glue this on or not. I might change my mind after I pin it. And then when you get back here, then you're going to keep gluing all the way around. And I don't like it. <laughs> so I like the other one. And I've got fur in my mouth. So we're going to take that off. And I'm going to take... I had a needle. Oh, it's see in there. So i got to get my needles out so I don't poke myself. And I don't leave a pin in there if I sell these. So I don't like that. It might look different if I had a different kind. Um... But I'm just going to leave these like this. So we're going to take and we're going to put right over here. And you're going to leave some room down here so you can put a bow. So I'm just going to put a nice amount of glue. And I'm going to get my greenery. And I'm going to put a couple of them. Add it kind of at a V. And then if you wanted to, I have um, these leaves. I got these, um, they were on a bush. I, I, I think I got them a couple of years ago. This is kind of big, so I'm gonna cut it down. So you can do that with your leaves, if your leaf is too big. If I wanted to make this to a holly leaf, just look at a picture of a holly leaf. That's what I do. If I'm making a gnome and I wanna make a certain kind, I will Google it. I will look up images of that certain kind of gnome or person or if it's like a golfer or a uh, um, Santa gnome, if it's an elf, that's what I'll do. So I'm just going to glue that on there. And I have another one. And this one's small enough so I don't have to cut it. And so we're going to do that. So an easy way, I'll show you guys an easy way to make a bow. And I'm going to get you a little closer so you can see. 
So to make a bow and you need to have a piece of ribbon to tie off in the middle. So we will just use some of our thread. I had some red and I don't know where it went. Oh, it's right here. Okay, so we'll use this red. It's gonna be our tie off. So for, I would just, because I, I did, a, did one and the bow was too big. So I'm just gonna cut a chunk and you're gonna take and have it like this so you've got it like almost folded in half and you're going to take one side and loop it and the other side so you're going to kind of make like the um, breast cancer survivor sign so you're going to kind of do that and you're going to take here and you're going to put it there and there's our bow but it's the front of it is right here Okay, so you're gonna take it like this. So you're almost making a figure eight, but you've got two ends. So this is gonna be your bow up here and you're gonna take this middle part and put it right in the center where it's crossing. And then you're gonna take your ribbon and you have to see if your bow is gonna be too big right now you can do it before we what before we get it the tie before we tie it too tight. And if you want to use um, some wire or whatever, you can do that too. And then you're just going to have to try to hold it. And I've got glue, I think, on my glue st strings on my ribbon. And then you're just going to tie that and you're going to have to tie it in a knot. So before you tie it too tight, see if your bow is too big or if it's too small. I want mine a little smaller, so I'm going to pull my loop, my ends, and I'm going to tighten this. And I know you guys are like, oh my God, she's why is she doing that? That is so much work. <laughs> but you know what? I'll tell you in a second. And then you can leave these as tails or you can cut them off. I cut them off because then I'm just going to glue it. If this was double sided ribbon and it was the same on both sides, yeah, I would just tie a regular bow. But it's not. It's glitter on one side and smooth on the other. So by doing it this way, you have all of your glitter on one side and you don't have where you've got the side is the wrong side and you know what I'm talking about. So then we can just trim these and I got to finish this up because it's almost two o'clock and then we would just glue our bow on and try to glue those ends. And you're going to glue that right underneath that greenery and then you're just going to take some berries and I get these on the stem and you're just going to cut them right off and we're going to glue them on And you can do you can do whatever kind of greenery if you don't want to do greenery you can do whatever you want and then we want to let those dry and there is our I'm just gonna say this is a Christmas dome because it's not really Santa this one I it, I like the fur around it this one actually I did twice I wrapped it around twice now that I'm looking at it. So you can do that. You can use, if you get some of the really fuzzy fleece um, that looks like lambs, you can use that. So 
So let me just clean up a little bit. And get some stuff out of the way. So here are our two gnomes. And I think they turned out pretty cute. I love the idea of the sweater. So if you guys like my channel, um, if you like the content, click on that like button. If you want to see more um, like this, let me know in the comments. And that also helps um, when you click that like button, that lets me know. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to join my crafting community and click on that subscribe button and then hit that bell and that will notify you every time I upload a new video. Um, so I have some other videos coming out um, or that I want to get out. Um, I have an angel and I have a nativity set and these are not gnomes. So um, I'm going to try to get her done. Um, I probably won't get the video done on her till next week. And I have, and they're not, I have one set and I will show you the nativity. I did see um, a lady on face on YouTube make these, but okay, you probably couldn't see the angel before. And I'll show you the gnomes again. So I'm gonna set that aside. So here's the angel. I think she turned out just gorgeous. I made her a little coat. I decorated this with just white fleece. And she's made with a styrofoam cone. Her body is white fleece. No, it's not. It's like uh, quilting material. So it's just white. And then I had this like small tablecloth that I bought, um, probably at their store. And um, she turned out really pretty. I did do her face. I just covered a styrofoam ball and fleece. And I put a little tiny bit of bronzer on it just to give it some color and made her wings from cardboard and this furry kind of fleece or material. But I will do a video on her. And then this is, I am making these for my craft fair, the nativity scene. Patty J. Good did do something similar and I did see it. And then I was on Facebook and I seen where they did other ones and they did them like this and they covered them and um, I had this wood I got at a flea market and I had a wire ring I drilled holes in this wood and then hot glued it and wood glued um, but I really hot glued the base and let it dry 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 and then I covered the ring with the Spanish moss and uh, I did lights and I got these lights. It's a copper wire and you can't even really see it. They are so bright. Um, and then I did, so I did his staff and just like a black wire. This one I did in the wire with the paper twist. And then I have another set. Let me show you this one. And I did I made the cradle, so I will show you how to do that. So this was my first cradle. This is this is a little rough, and then I did um, the other one, and I did it out of popsicle sticks. And then I did these. These were my first two. So this is my first Mary and Joseph, and I put it on my Facebook page, and everybody liked the square ones. And my square wood was just from the railings on our deck is all I used. And I cut Mary at four and Joseph at four and a half. And then I had the wooden ball knobs that I glued on. So I'm going to go over that video. I don't know if I will get to make it this week or not. Um, so yeah, Patty, she did hers um, different. She did them, I decorated mine more. 
Um, she does have a wonderful channel, so you guys should go check her out if you haven't already. Um, Patty J. Good. And so I will show you how to do this. So this one is a little rough, and it still is kind of cute. So I did this cradle, and it actually turned out really good. I mean, you can see inside, you can see the hot glue, but I'm not worried about it. Um, so I will show you how to make that. And then I even, when I did baby Jesus, he's got little clothes on under there. So this was very special to make this. Um, when you're making something like this, it just, um, that this time of year and um, the, the Lord that he is there with us all the time. Um, we just have to ask him for help when we need it because we all need it once in a while, sometimes more. So, and I just, I didn't, I didn't want to glue him in the blanket and then I didn't want to glue him in the cradle either. So I just kind of left that and I didn't glue this to the base, but I glued Mary and Joseph. And then I just decorated with a little green ring. So I'm going to show you. The other ones I'm going to do it might be a little different. It's probably not going to be round, but I'll give you a couple options. So let's bring back our gnomes. And I'm just so happy I finally got a video done and I'm going to try to get it out within the next day or so. So this is the one we did together. And then here's the other one so they turned out really cute I don't think I'll have a problem selling them so I'm gonna make some more I'm gonna have to go try the other sweater on and see if it fits and if it doesn't fit it's gonna become some gnomes so you guys have a great day thank you for joining me crafting with me if you have any questions or comments leave them below I missed you guys I've been trying for probably a two or three weeks now to get a video out and it's like something always comes up but I um, will be gone for a couple of weeks um, coming up um, the end of this year in December in, in Hawaii and I might even try to do a video in Hawaii my girlfriend going with my girlfriend her husband and then my husband and my son so they're probably gonna say you're not doing a video you're on vacation you got to do a video when you're in Hawaii, goodness. So we'll see what kind of, what I make. It'll have to be a gnome, of course. But you guys have a great day. I love you and thank you for supporting me. Thank you for sticking around and not just leaving me when I've been on, I don't want to say hiatus, but on a break. Thank you guys. I love you. See you next time. Bye-bye.